Hello lovely people, welcome to another episode of Book Chat, the regular roundup of stuff I've read at some point in my past. I've got three books to talk about this week, shall we just go for it? Yes. Um, I'm going to kick things off with Dissolution by C.J. Sansom. This is a murder mystery set in Tudor times. Specifically, we are um, set during the time of the dissolution of the monasteries. So we follow Shard Lake, who is uh, one of Cromwell's commissioners, and he's sent to this remote um, abbey where the previous commissioner has been found murdered. So Shard Lake has not only been sent to um, find out what happened and solve the murder, but also because it's during the dissolution of the monasteries, um, essentially, if there's any dirt that they can use to shut down the monastery, that would also be good to find. I enjoyed this. Um, my friend lent this to me because she loves the series, and she said that the first book is good, but the series really gets better as it goes on. So having read this first book, I definitely will be continuing with the series. I think it would be really fun to read. I enjoyed both the murder mystery aspect of it because as this book goes on, it becomes apparent that it's not just this one murder to investigate. There's some other things going on. Um, which was really fun and I enjoyed piecing it together. I particularly enjoyed the historical world building. Um, again, my friend highlights her books. A lot of the world building in this was highlighted because she's writing her own thing about Tudor England. So um, that really drew my eye to these moments of like um, setting a place and historical details and stuff like that. So I definitely feel like that influenced how I read this, but in a very good way, where I really appreciate all the world building he's put into this. Um, it was interesting. Shard Lake as a main character is interesting because I didn't always, not I didn't dislike him. It's just um, occasionally he can be quite bullheaded. There were moments where like the guy who is also there with him, who's like his assistant, is like questioning some of the beliefs he holds about like specifically like Cromwell and stuff like this, and that was really interesting. Um, also, this this ending of an era, like the monastery's ending. Um, although there was corruption in the monasteries and stuff like this, equally it was this entire way of life and so there, it was an end of an era for that to all come crumbling down and that sort of thing and I felt like that was really like compassionately shown and that sort of thing. I feel like that's all I really have to say on this one but um, it was a fun murder mystery. I'm intrigued to see where the rest of the series goes because I would like to explore further. Oh, I would give two little tiny, I don't know if they are as serious as trigger warnings, but just mentioning. Um, one thing is that Shard Lake has kyphosis, so he has like a curvature of the spine, and um, is there's a lot of like ableist rhetoric that is sort of like a given towards him and that he is also internalised, which I guess is like accurate for the time, but equally I'm just flagging because sometimes if you want to read a historical murder mystery, um, you don't necessarily want to be encountering ableism. Um, and then equally there's a character in this, in the monastery, who is gay, and again there are some very like Tudor attitudes towards that. But I will say that as the text goes on, like, um, there is like compassion extended to that character and stuff like that, so it doesn't like, it's not like relentlessly homophobic, it's just that there are comments and stuff given by characters. So I'm just like flagging those things because equally like, sometimes you want to know things before you go in. The next book I want to talk about is Blood Moon by Lucy Cuthew. This is another book that was lent to me by my friend. Um, this was really interesting. This is told in verse, and I always find it really interesting when novels are told in verse. Is this a decision for a reason? Is it because the person is a poet? I personally felt like the element of verse really added to this. So this tells the story of Frankie. During Frankie's first sexual experience, um, she comes on her period. Um, between her and the boy Benjamin that this happens with, um, it's fine, like, they're, they're absolutely fine about it, it doesn't ruin the moment, but somehow it gets out in her secondary school what's happened, and then she becomes the target of a lot of bullying, and specifically, like, online bullying and stuff like that. And so this element of this novel being told through verse, I felt like worked really well, because it meant that this was such a quick read, I read this in, like, like an hour or something, <laughs> because um, this style of telling, it meant that you like built up momentum and you can read it really quickly and you're like thrown into it and it's like 
um, as the narrative builds and gets faster and faster as like all of this incoming social media stuff is coming in and it's like piling on top of her and I just felt like this like narrative form really worked with like the themes that were being discussed in this. One thing I also really liked about this is there is like real positivity at its heart like it is very much examining like the double standards inherent in both our society but also specifically like secondary school and the way that like Frankie's experience is very very different from Benjamin's experience um, and she is very much the focal point and not him and um, there was a lot of like that inequality being addressed. Um, I also thought that this really captured like the particular cruelty and kindnesses of being a teenage girl because there's another strand in this which is uh, Frankie and her best friend Harriet having a massive falling out and um, that being also tied into all of this plotline that's happening and I felt it just felt so authentic to me and um, it kind of really reminded me why I would never go back to you know some people are like oh secondary school best years of your life and I'm like no no um, so yeah, I thought that this did what it did really, really well with an inherent, like, affirming positivity that if you're reading this as, like, a teenage reader should be really affirming to you and a reminder that, like, um, this taboo around periods is very much, like, a created thing and actually should not be there. I gave it a four stars. I was, I was wavering between three and four stars. I bumped it up because I did get so sucked into it and I really enjoyed it. There were a couple of plot things which I felt like could have been given a little bit more time. Like, for example, there's something that Harriet does to Frankie um, very near the beginning when they're falling out, which I felt like was actually quite serious and should have potentially been addressed more. I felt like some of the critiques that Frankie had of Harriet were actually quite reasonable, not necessarily in the way that they were expressed. Both girls definitely do things that are not great and, like, um, perpetuate this discourse that they're having. It's just that um, Harriet does some stuff that I'm like, as an adult, like, oh dear. <laughs> I felt like uh, Benjamin was sort of off the hook for some behaviour that I was like, it's not terrible, but it's also not great. So like, there were a couple of niggles that I had, but on the whole, I thought it was really good. I would also like to flag that this specifically uses language that is like, associating like, periods with like, girlhood and womanhood and stuff like this. There's not like, any mention of having periods and uh, not being a woman. Um, so again, I'm just flagging that because that is an aspect that you might want to be aware of when going in. The final book I wanted to talk about was The Forty Rules of Love by Elif Shafak. I read this for my work book club. I'm recording it before we've had the book club, as I apparently keep doing now. So um, I'll probably develop my thoughts further after discussing them with other people who've read the book. This has two narratives going throughout. The first one follows Ella. She, like, seemingly has the perfect life. She has a husband. She has three children. Blah, blah, blah. Um, essentially, but she becomes aware that her life is, like, just lacking in love. Like, she is doing her duty, but she's not happy. She's recently started working um, for this publishing company where she is uh, the person who like reads manuscripts and then compiles a report on them as to like whether they should go further and that sort of thing. So she starts reading this manuscript written by this guy um, and the manuscript is the other narrative. The manuscript is about Shams of Tabriz and his relationship with Rumi who was a Sufi poet and it's called 40 Rules of Love because Shams has these 40 rules and as you follow his narrative the rules are given to you at various points. Um, I enjoyed this. Some people in my book club have really been struggling with this um, because it's not the sort of thing that they would normally read. I personally had an enjoyable time reading it and I'm actually really looking forward to discussing it because I think there'll be some interesting discussions to be had. I was much more drawn into the Shams and Rumi chapters than I was Ella's chapters and I think that's largely because First of all, I have read Rumi's poetry, um, and I did really enjoy reading his poetry, so I really found it very interesting to get a lot of um, context and backstory and to understand this uh, relationship between these two men, because even though this is fictionalised, it's obviously drawing on a lot of real events and history and that sort of thing, which is stuff that I didn't know anything about. So from an interest point of view, just knowing what happened was interesting. I also really enjoyed these 40 rules and sitting with them and considering them and that sort of thing like do I agree with what's being said um let's consider that sort of thing so I felt like the Shams and Rumi chapters gave me a lot to sit with and consider that I will potentially be sitting with and considering for longer I don't know a huge amount about Sufism I found it very interesting to learn more about it I can't speak for like a how accurate it is I can't speak for like 
uh, how accurate like the portrayal of like Sufism versus the more like traditional Muslim belief that sort of thing because again I don't really know a lot about it so I don't want to like uh, speak confidently on things that I don't know about but it was interesting for me to read this to learn a bit more to get a glimpse in that sort of thing and I liked that the um, manuscript also had different perspectives so it also it wasn't just from Shan's perspective or Rumi's perspective there were other characters who in many ways are like side characters but they provided some interesting perspectives um, and the thing about Ella's plotline is it was just a little bit more formulaic at the same time it did I did really feel for this character who has essentially like been a bit on autopilot and is just like being a good mum and being a good wife but her heart's not in the relationship and she doesn't feel love for this person anymore and that sort of thing and her rediscovering love and that sort of thing I really did like I like I, I felt for that I, I had like a kernel of being like yes I'm happy for you but it just felt like it was a little bit more like by the numbers and then when she meets this guy who's written the manuscript it was I don't know some of the like twists and stuff I was like I this is a bit predictable and melodramatic but in like a okay of course this is what's happening now kind of way so um I definitely enjoyed half of it more than the other half of it but I had a fun time um one thing I like about my book club is it gets me like reading books and like considering books and you know like when you're reading something to have a conversation about it with other people it makes you like pay attention to like aspects a bit more and stuff I don't know um but yeah I had a fun time and that's like it really um as per usual I'd love to know if you have thoughts on any of these please do leave a comment down below um otherwise I hope you're having the loveliest of days and I'll see you next time for something different